Prav lepo pozdravljeni vsi, ki poslušate moj predsedničin podcast. In prav z velikim ponosom in veseljem danes pozdravljam mojo gostjo, gospod Dunjo Mijatovič. To je gospa, ki jo neizmerno cenim. Svoje življenje je posvetila delu na področju temeljnih človekovih pravic. Uh, welcome, Dunja. We will continue in English. And for all the viewers and listeners, you can listen to a audio podcast if you do speak English. But if you don't, our video podcast is going to be translated uh, to Slovenian language as well. Dunja, can I be a bit more personal for the first question? Did you just wake up when you were young one day in the morning and you said to yourself, I want to be the Commissioner for Human Rights inside the Council of Europe. I want to dedicate my life to, to human rights. What was the trigger in your life that you are so dedicated and passionate about mm. human rights? Not at all. Um, even later on, I, when I applied for this job, I never thought I want to be a Commissioner. Um, what I thought is like, I want to do this job. It's a challenge. Um, it's an, it's an honor. Uh, at the same time, it's a mission, probably not a job. It's a mission. Mm. It's a, you know responsibility, um, and it's a, you know opportunity of a lifetime. So you do it right, um, but it's not easy, of course. Um, it came, you know, actually after the war in um, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I changed uh, That's my the country of your, setting. Your region, just to exactly. You know, to the I'm, I'm from Sarajevo, from yes. from Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, and um, you know, before the war, I had completely different interests. I had uh, interest in horticulture, in uh, mm. biology, in interior design. Uh, my uh, interests were completely different, and um, my sort of. Uh, um, you know, as, as a young person, I wanted to learn languages, I wanted to travel and stuff like this. I never thought I will have to work uh, with um, victims, with uh, people going through um, horrifying uh, times or people that just simply suffer because of violence in the family. Do you ever regret the decision Absolutely that you are not. not an interior designer or, no. you know, a, a biologist, but you are a human rights not I, I I never saw you as an you know official. I more mm. see you as an advocate for human mm. rights. You do not regret the decision. No, no. not at all. Um, I do not regret it, and it's exactly because of what you just uh, said um, that I'm seen not as an official. I'm seen as a person who is uh, genuinely trying to 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 help, to assist. Uh, sometimes I'm I'm you know very direct, um, not di non-diplomatic, because when it comes to grave human rights violations, it's very difficult to, to use a soft language when you see people suffering with your own eyes, when you travel to different places and then you try to sort of tackle those issues. I, I work with a very small team. Uh, if you think of the international architecture of human rights institutions, it's a uh, 20 plus people uh, working uh, uh, with me and trying to cover issues in 46 uh, member states. And uh, before that, as you know, I, I worked on issues related to freedom of expression. Uh, and um, those are particularly important issues. But now, in this challenging time, having a role of the Commissioner for Human Rights in a regional uh, main human rights body uh, in Europe is, is quite um, um, a responsibility, I would say. And uh, it is not only related to the crisis that we have uh, um, in a post-pandemic uh, world, but also uh, in relation to uh, the war, full-fledged invasion in Ukraine. It is also related to, you know, these turbulences and, and, and shakes in, in democracies throughout Europe uh, when it you comes to basic uh, uh, human yeah. rights. You mentioned Ukraine. I wanted to ask you a question. What was the most saddest, most horrified experience in your, not life, but in, uh, while you are a commissioner for human rights, was it visiting Bucha? I know you were there. As a woman, as a human rights advocate, how was it to go there to see the devastation, mm. the bodies, the bones? Does this change you a bit, Dunja? Can you just, after such an experience, 
go to sleep and try not to think about it? Is that even possible? No, it's not. If yes. you are, you know, like, um, you know, just a human being uh, with, um, you know, some sort of uh, empathy or humility, you can't being official or not. Uh, you know, it's, it's a normal sort of, you know, it's a human reaction. Uh, for me, going to Bucha was Sarajevo revisited, mm. uh, was uh, Srebrenica revisited, was, um, you know, many places that I've seen um, um, in my own country. Um, but, you know, what, what is felt uh, and what stays with you, um, you know, is really also related to the beginning of the war in Sarajevo in 92, in April. You know, this, this plastic... Um, uh, sort of almost physical feeling of that something horrible is coming. And the first time I experienced this during uh, my term uh, at the uh, OSC was a visit to, to Crimea, to Simferopol in March uh, 2014. And I remember you know, vividly uh, we landed uh, to the Simfero to Simfero at the Simferopol sorry, uh, airport and I said to my team, Sarajevo revisited. Mm. You know, the just, you know, the, the feeling, the way people are looking at you, fear. Um, and this is, you know, what is unfortunately continuing. I thought we learned something, we but not. obviously uh, we did not. But nevertheless, we should not give up or give in uh, uh, in, in, you know, searching for solutions and trying to help as much as we can from the international organizations with our experience. Uh, but it is important, you know, to have um, countries like Slovenia, uh, when we talk about Western Balkans and uh, the way Slovenia is uh, so openly supporting uh, and, and helping and pushing, I just hope that the politicians would understand the moment uh, uh, that I think it's absolutely crucial for the future. Um, and um, to, to appreciate, uh, you know, the, this engagement uh, when it comes to, um, you know, really having somebody to lead you yes. and to make you understand why it is now or almost never. Uh, and that's why I think it's uh, really good to have this, uh, you know, strategic uh, forum now at this time with all the challenges you have as, a, as, a, as you know, the state and, and people. And I use this opportunity to you know, also offer my uh, condolences, but also full solidarity with Slovenian people uh, for this uh, extreme, um, you know, environmental uh, um, disaster. Uh, that is also another issue that is uh, very much on my agenda, um, um, trying to really uh, assist and to make politicians and governments understand that the environment is our future, it's, it is the key. If we do not win hearts and minds of young people if that you are actually to pushing humanity, us to do absolutely, uh, yeah. um, then you know we are not moving in the right direction. So, Dunya, mm -hmm. um, I have to explain yes that we are uh, recording this podcast uh, uh, at the Blade Strategic Forum in Villa Zlatorok. Next time the podcast is some, uh, probably going to be recorded somewhere else, but uh, in the panel that you were participating and I was the host of. You were quite bold and harsh in words explaining the situation in Western Balkans. And I particularly remember one sentence. You mentioned Srebrenica and you said some people still deny the genocide and the reconciliation, which is probably a necessary step for the ethnical groups in the Western Balkans uh, to start working on it. But you are visiting these countries regularly. Is reconciliation a process which even started already or we are still on, 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 on point zero? And regarding human rights, mm. uh, without respecting other people, non-discrimination is the basis. Minority human rights are the most important ones we can imagine. Okay. So what's your suggestion? What's your advice to the Western Balkan countries? I'm talking about this uh, constantly, and uh, uh, you're right, I'm very um, um, bold and, and blunt uh, and direct, but not because I want to shock uh, or anything even close to this. I just want to expose the problem. Um, and, uh, you know, this denial, uh, I invite all who do not believe just to go there mm -hmm. uh, to meet 
uh, uh, families to meet if there are any left uh, when it comes to mothers because they are dying. Um, to, to sort of try to understand, understand the, the gravity uh, of, of, of this horror uh, and genocide that happened. And the only way to heal, the only way to even start moving forward is first of all to recognize and to sort of pay respect. And then we can talk slowly about reconciliation. When it comes to ordinary people, I think things are moving, people are talking, people are meeting, uh, there are still mixed marriages, uh, as we call them, mixed marriages. There are still, you know, when it comes to friendships uh, across the region, uh, you know, among all these countries, I mean, it's, it's working. It's showing that it's not, you know, even with all these horrifying things, there is no hatred, you know, that is like ingrained, like you have at some places uh, in the world. Yes. But the politics is not allowing it. Mm -hmm. The politic is blocking it, and with this glorification of the war criminals, no matter which side, you know, inviting them to, to, to have lectures in the schools and uh, to promote the books. Uh, in, it, it, it's something that I'm talking about very openly and very publicly, because I just find it, you know, uh, reckless uh, and, and irresponsible uh, to be talking about moving towards EU with this kind of attitude. If we look at the challenges today, I mean, the war is on the doorstep of European Union inside Europe. The Western Balkan region is always uh, a barrel of gunpowder. This is how this region mm -hmm. is called. But um, you are in charge of all 46 member states inside the Council of Europe. What are the main challenges in the field of human rights today? Can you just point one or two? Mm. So what occupies you the most? I mean, what occupies me the most, of course, is, uh, you know, tackling the issues uh, uh, related to Ukraine. Um, and that uh, goes, you know, from the accountability, um, the importance of, of uh, you know, working with uh, um, uh, NGOs, with uh, human rights defenders, uh, the issue of deported children um, uh, to Russia, uh, you know, all these things that I, you know, like really with a humble sort of approach, trying to see where I can have the most impact or influence. Apart from that, um, you know, just uh, yesterday I had a statement in relation to a uh, um, very tense situation between Armenia and Azerbaijan and the blockage of Lachin uh, Corridor, um, because, you know, none of us can go and, and do our human rights work there. So we have, uh, you know, thousands of people uh, there that are blocked and they, they have no freedom of movement. And apart from that, of course, you know, Western Balkan uh, is there. But, you know, what, what I'm also telling, you know, not just the government, but also uh, the NGOs and civil society in the Western Balkans, you have to understand that we are just one of the problems, that there is no way that, you know, governments and the international community will turn their back to everything else and just solve again and come back to the Western Balkans. Because after 30 years, there is an expectation that there is some, something positive happening. But apart from that, you also have themes that are very problematic across um, all 46, so among all 46 member states. Uh, migration comes to my mind. Um, immediately um, and here I'm again talking based on all my trips. I went to Lesbos, I went to Samos. Um, I always had a great support of, of uh, pre uh, President of Greece uh, uh, in all my um, uh, pleas to, to government to, to do something, but it's not just about Greece. It is also about other countries that do Lampedusa, not wish to take. Italy. Yeah. And also, you know, all of us that are away from the forefront, uh, and uh, n not willing to take uh, a burden. And you spoke about solidarity. Um, mm -hmm. So um, that is also something that is very problematic. And then the issue that is very high on my agenda since I joined the office, uh, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly. And then again, even you know, now in 21st century, after so many uh, successes and so many positive uh, changes, women's rights. This is what I wanted to ask you. You are the first female mm. commissioner of human rights yeah. inside the Council of Europe. 
me being the first female president of the Republic of Slovenia, of course, the first thing comes into mind that we do share the passion for gender equality as well. Yes. Without gender equality, we can hardly discuss human rights. I mean, uh, I always say, you know, that every single country or entity or an institution is really foolish if they disregard half of the potential mm. of let's say, of the nation. Yes. Well, we consist 50%, in some countries even more, 51, 49 of men. Mm. Um, how do you tackle gender equality? And was it hard, harder to get the position of the commissioner because you're a woman? I wouldn't say so. I, I, I never felt, uh, you know, uh, I think the bigger challenge uh, to become commissioner was the fact that I come from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Ah. Um, so it's uh, apart from the fact that I'm a woman, I'm a woman from a non-EU country. Uh, there was never a commissioner from a non-EU country and coming from a very problematic complex country there were many um, sort of um, you know question marks if I would be able to do this job. Um, so I think that was a bigger challenge than the fact that uh, I'm a, a woman. The same happened at the OSC because I was also the first OSC representative Correct. in freedom of the media from non-EU and uh, the first woman. So at, at least, you know, I broke the ice uh, in order to, to make it uh, uh, possible. So it's not your um, nationality that uh, is, uh, you know, leading your professional sort of life, but it's something else. It's a passion, as you said. It's, uh, you know, also uh, to do with what you are doing, you know, based on everything you achieved in your previous uh, life and how it, you know, really translates into the role uh, being, uh, you know, a role model, uh, not only for uh, girls and, and women in, in Slovenia, but uh, in, in the whole of region and, and uh, beyond. Uh, because I know I talk to, 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 to many and, and they talk about you very openly. I'm not trying to sort of, you know, be flattering you or anything, but it is Appreciate important. It, yes. it is important. It, it shows... Uh, you know, yes, we can, you know, we should, we should not really be shy, you know, like really shying away from, from saying, I want to be a president, you know, I want to do this, you know, I want to uh, uh, do um, any kind of job, you know, I, I want to be a, you know, a waiter, I want to, to or a waitress or whatever, you know, without sort of disregarding uh, things. But if, if you want to change things uh, for better, you should engage. Um, and I know, I mean, I would never enter politics because I would be, you know, really disastrous. <laughs> um, uh, and I admit that. Uh, but, I there are, think there, so. <laughs> but there are different okay. ways yeah. and we should all, you know, have our place. But if we should, you know, really, as you rightly said, allow um, all to be part of, of making our societies better. And you cannot disregard not just women, but also LGBTI community, all you know, differences among us should elderly be something. Elderly people, which are you know, heavily people, attacked in some countries. People like, with disabilities, yeah, yeah. Uh, minorities. It's not easy. It's complex. It never is. Uh, but you know, there is no other way. I do not see any other way. Otherwise, we are again going to some sort of you know, um, closed societies uh, and and very problematic, uh, uh, controlled. Uh, um, um, you know, environments where nothing can, can be uh, growing that is positive and, and leading to something that, uh, you know, we can be proud of. Let us conclude with uh, your previous expertise, which is, of course, heavily connected to the position you have right now. Um, without freedom of expression, without free press, there is no democracy. Mm. And no, we are not uh, free people. We are not free people. So do you see... Um, a lot of dangers in this regard right now. Just briefly, do you follow social media and artificial intelligence, which is, you know, heavily connected to free expression? Also, media will have to change. The landscape mm -hmm. is changing. Uh, just yeah. short opinion of yours regarding, yeah. you know. I started this topic. working on these issues uh, uh, quite some time ago, even in my own um, uh, country, and then we were already then working on digital divide and also mm. cooperating uh, with many agencies, including Slovenian uh, one, on trying to make things better. Um, when it comes to artificial intelligence, this, that is something that we brought on the agenda uh, of the Council of Europe at the very beginning of my mandate. 
um, trying to really offer some kind of um, you know uh, toolbox uh, uh, for uh, unlocking you know artificial intelligence and, and human rights and, and uh, recommending states what needs to be done and then we continued also with the latest uh, report where we talk about the importance of independent uh, um, national structures in ombuds offices in, in the process of uh, receiving complaints when it comes to artificial intelligence. But there we are again failing like we failed you know, before the internet time when it comes to literacy, yes. internet literacy, mm -hmm. AI literacy. Um, and there you know, we, we see problems. We, I also see problems with, uh, you know, uh, it's twofold. On one side, no regulation. On the other side, over-regulation. Yes. Um, and people becoming, you know, sometimes too sensitive uh, uh, when it comes to words. I mean, I do understand and, and I know that you do, that words can um, really hurt. But, you know, if you want to live in democracy, you, you also need to pay price sometimes to accept, you know, um, uh, rhetoric and, and also uh, words that are, you know, provocative, sometimes vulgar, yes. unacceptable. Uh, but we still need to, you know, find, um, uh, you know, or to, to, to make sure that this fine line is not crossed uh, and we do not become censors in order to tackle certain issues. But it's clear, hate speech is hate speech and that needs to be tackled. But how and, um, you know, are we moving in the right direction also when it comes to public service media and many other things, particularly in this part of the world? Mm. Um, is is uh, is a big question for for many, and I always stayed uh, you know very much engaged uh, with uh, many colleagues that uh, worked hard on these issues. But uh, it seems to me that also commercial part is uh, suffering at the same time. Correct. So we we are uh, in a way at a crossroads for a very long period of time. Uh, but I do hope that uh, you know artificial intelligence and the progress will not kill humanity, like some are saying. Uh, I just think it's a bit of exaggeration. Dunia, I really appreciate a lot that you took, took time to you know, have a, this short discussion with me. So this was not chat GPT discussion, but it was <laughs> chat Dunia and Natasha. And uh, one thing that I can take out of our conversation is definitely that where is the will, there is always a path. That's for sure. I wish you all the best. Continue the good work. We will follow each other and I'm pretty sure we will meet again. Vam pa hvala lepa, ker ste naj poslušali. Do naslednjič. Na svidenje.